everyone and welcome to SE Geek Bootcamp. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today we're going to be talking about conditional statements. So sit back and download a cup of knowledge because SE Geek begins now. So in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, if statements, conditionals, switch statements, and sometimes called control statements, basically ways that you can actually control the flow of your program. Uh, you know, because obviously, you know, we could do, you know, print line, some text. And if we run this, we get some text. And then we could do print line. Um, other text. And now if we run that, it prints both of them. But say we wanted to have a condition where we would print one and not the other, depending on you know how the uh, how the condition uh, panned out. So what we can do is we can do what's called an if statement, and basically we can do you know if. And what I'm going to do is put a condition in here. We'll come back to that. We'll print that out. Now, something else that we can do, which is optional, but we're going to, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to skip it. I'll come back to that. So what we want is a condition right here. So let's uh, actually take what we had from last video, define a variable called times, and we'll just say that it's four for whatever reason. Now what we want to do here is a condition and say if times is uh, greater than three, we print the text. Otherwise, we don't print the text. So if we run this, it prints the text. But if we say take this and put it down to three, which three is not greater than three, we run this, it doesn't print the text. So, you know, we have a, a condition going on here. And there are many, you know, obviously there are many ways that you can, many uh, ways you can actually write conditions. There's a lot, a lot of operators. This is the uh, times greater than. We could also swap that around and use less than. And, you know, obviously it's not less than three. But so if we put that to two and run, we show it. Another thing I'm going to show right here is uh, we also have the option of doing else and basically putting this so that essentially what we have here is if, you know, this condition, then we do this, else we do this. So this is, you know, in other programming languages, there are, you know, different semantics of, you know, how this plays out. Like uh, I've seen somewhere, you know, you'd have this and then you'd actually type out, you know, the then and maybe colon. It depends on the language. This is the way Groovy does it, is it uh, breaks those blo these blocks of the condition up with using these curly brackets right here. So you have the condition, which is typically within these parentheses and these curly blocks, and you know, depending on the condition. So if we run this, obviously times is uh, less uh, two, which is less than three, so we get some text. And if we bump this up to say four and run it, times is four, which is greater than three, so we get some other text. So this is one of the things that you can do, and uh, basically I have some other just notes here for me to so just to, for me to explain. So one of the, so there's as I mentioned, there's a bunch of different operators you can use. So right now we're using less than and greater than, but you can actually chain um, commands and do something like or, which this is the operator for or, uh, don't ask me why, probably because they needed something, you know, similar and the double ands, actually it probably goes back to math symbols, but in either case, so this would be or, 
Um, so we have times is less than three um, or times is greater than zero. So what we could do here is you know, put this uh, two, which is uh, would be less than three, and it'd be greater than zero, so, so we should get some text. So if I run that, we get some text. Now, what if I also wanted uh, it to be greater than or equal to? Well, we can, or actually less than or equal to, I mean, I should say. So we could put this here, and if we put that there, and run it, and we still get some text. Um, just to show you that we're actually changing this, I'll change it to four, run it again. Uh, let's see. Run it again. Wait a minute. Uh, logic here. So times is four. So four is less than or equal to three. Why are we still getting some text? <laughs> oh, because I'm using or. So actually, let's change this. That's actually a, a good uh, thing to bring up, a little mistake. Uh, or, so it's, it's w one thing we see is that it is um, actually greater than three, and it's not equal to three, but it's also still greater than zero. So the or statement uh, allows both those conditions. So if we change this to and, oops, no, 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 wrong and so it has to be less than or equal to three and greater than zero and run this we'll get some other text however if we put this back to like two we still get some text so that's you know one thing you have to be careful about is thinking about what these operators actually mean ands and ors um it, it's one of the the uh the things that you get with conditions of, uh, you know, ands and or statements, uh, it's Boolean logic. Um, and to go even deeper into this, I would say look at the uh, Groovy episode I did on Groovy Truth because that one thing about uh, the truth of conditional statements, that can change slightly between languages. Although you might want to hold off on to that until you get through all the boot camp videos just because I do mention some things in there that I haven't mentioned yet. Um, but let's keep going here. And I'm just going to simplify this a little. And one thing we're going to do is we'll change this to that. So equals equals. Uh, in Groovy is means equals because we use equals right here for assignment. So if I run this, I get some other text. And if I change this to three and run it again, I get some text because, you know, three equals three. Um, another thing we can do, as I showed you the greater than or, you know, equals or greater than or less than and equals, uh, we can also do bang, which, you know, little explanation point. That means not equals three. So if I run this, I'll get some other text. And if I change this to, you know, anything else, I'll get some text. So that's one. Of the, this is one of the ways that you can, you know, actually control how your program, how the flow of your program uh, actually happens, uh, based on you know the variables in your program and what their current state is when this is run. You'll get different behavior. So moving on, uh, we also have a switch statement. So what I'm going to do is just uh, come up here. And one thing I haven't really touched on is what this means. Uh, just to throw it in right now, this is a comment. So anything after this will not actually execute. So it's something you can put into your program to just you know comment what's going on. For here, I, I put it in just as notes. Uh, you also might have seen uh, this slash star. So if you have slash star, anything between this slash star and this star slash is considered a comment and will not be executed. So I'm gonna get rid of these and we'll talk about this switch statement which I've already put together here. And so we have uh, a variable called message, and right now it has the content of the string tech, uh, test, and we have a switch statement instead of an if statement, and we're taking the message variable 
as you know the thing that we're going to switch on and then we have cases here so oops and just to make this the way it should be uh, so basically what's going to come down here is like message will come in here and uh, it'll come to whatever uh, case actually lines up with it in this case uh, test test would come here it would print testing and break which means it would break out of this statement uh, you can also use break in uh, if statements and uh, in other statements that I'll show you uh, later on but uh, they're particularly useful in uh, switch statements uh, but if you didn't have break here then it could actually fall down to this case and check this case statement as well and if they were uh, you know something that could happen at the same time then they might you know it, it might actually uh, print both of those so but in this case uh, you know just run this we get testing so now if I change the variable to pass when I run this obviously it won't uh, come here because you know it's not test but it'll come here for pass and it'll print uh, test passed so we'll run that and you see test passed so if I change this to anything else it doesn't matter what it is it won't do either of these two but we also have this other thing called a default so basically we specified a bunch of cases but we also specified the default so if it doesn't fit into any of the cases we specified we'll print out this message and if we run that you'll see we print test failed so those are a couple ways of uh, controlling the flow of your program and being able to test things and see you know what's in variables like I, I said it was a way to control the flow but it's actually a good way to just uh, test what's in that variable and do something based on it um, as you saw with the switch statement and before with the if statement so that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about with uh, ifs, conditionals, and controls, you know, aka control statements. So I'll talk to you next time.